One. Nobody speaks to Cindy. I just can't forget about the day we met. Those days with you when skies were blue. Suddenly, there were no lights. Everybody stood up in the dark concert hall. They were screaming and shouting, "More! More! More!" That's the end of the show, and it's good night from Strawberry and the Sensations," shouted Cindy into the microphone. Then she turned. And began to walk between the amplifiers to the side of the stage. She ran down the stairs towards the dressing rooms. The lights went on in the concert hall, and three thousand people got up and began to move slowly towards the doors. A road manager gave Cindy a towel for her face. Bobby and Denise were drinking cokes in their dressing room. That was a good show, the best," said Bobby. Cindy laughed. Yeah, well, one more show, and it's the end of the tour. What's the time? Nine o'clock," said Denise. Or before the second show. Right. I need a drink," Cindy. Age. They were laughing. Good show, Cindy," said Hank, the guitarist. The singing was okay. I'm not sure about the guitar," said Cindy. Then she saw Hank's face. Don't worry, Hank. That was a joke. Oh yeah, very funny," said Hank. But he was smiling. "I'm going to get a drink," said Cindy. "What do you want, Hank?" "Uh, Miss Strawberry, can I speak with you for a moment?" Cindy looked round. A police officer was standing behind her. A road manager walked towards them. "Sorry, no autographs," he said. "But I'm the police chief," said the police officer angrily. "It doesn't matter. She's very tired. You can't have her autograph," said the road manager. "But I can give you a photograph. Here you are." "I don't want," that, said the police chief. "It's all right. He can have an autograph. Give me a pen." I don't want an autograph either," said the police chief. "Look, Miss Strawberry, where can we speak?" The road man is angry. Nobody speaks to Cindy between shows. Not the police chief. Not the president. Nobody. Can. The police chief looked at Cindy. "This is important," he said. "It's police business. Talk to you, Miss Strawberry. I must talk to you alone." It's okay," Cindy said to the road manager. She turned to the officer. "My name isn't Miss Strawberry. Everybody calls me Strawberry because of my red hair. My name's Cindy Harris." "Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Harris," said the police chief. "Can we speak in your dressing room?" "Has there been an accident? Is my family all right?" Nobody's had an accident, Miss Harris. Don't worry. Now, can we talk? Okay, but I don't have much time. There's another show at ten o'clock. Two, stop the show. Went in Cindy's dressing room. Cindy sat down. She opened a small case on the table. Excuse me," she said, "but I have to do my makeup before the second show. Maybe you'd like to read this first," said the police chief. He gave Cindy a piece of paper. Cindy took it. Cindy's face was white. "What is this? A joke?" "What do you think?" said the police chief. It's from some 
crazy man, or crazy woman, said the police chief. Okay, it's from some crazy man or woman, said Cindy. But you don't believe it, do you? Tonight, Strawberry is going to die. This is a good town. We don't want her here. Her music is bad. Rock and roll is music from the devil. We must kill her. Stop the show, or she dies. There are a lot of crazy people," said the police chief. "But I'm only a singer. Nobody wants to kill me." Somebody. Oh," said Cindy. "It's just a piece of paper." I think. I think we must stop the show," police chief. "We can't do that." Three thousand kids made a lot of money for tickets. We've flown from New York. It's the last show of the tour. We can't stop the show. We can't. Your manager said the same thing too. He didn't want you to see the piece of paper," said the police chief. "But it's your life, or death," said Cindy. "The joke too." But nothing is going to happen. Believe me. I hope not," said the police chief. "But I don't want a murder in my city. There isn't going to be a murder." Cindy's hand was shaking when she took some makeup. She began making up her eyes. Well, I've got fifty police officers in the concert hall for the second show. They're going to watch you and the people at the concert. Cindy stood up. No, we've got our road managers. We don't need the police. This is a rock concert. When the kids see the police all around the concert hall, they aren't going to like it. They want to dance near the stage. The police chief looked at the floor for a moment, then looked at Cindy. I'm sorry. But nobody is going to dance near the stage. They're all going to stay in their seats. The kids always dance near the stage at our shows. You can't stop them. There's going to be trouble, she said. They are not going to dance near the stage, and there is not going to be trouble. He stood up. Be careful, Miss Harris. Please be very careful. Bobby and Denise came into the room. "Aren't you ready yet, Cindy?" said Bobby. "Yeah, yeah, I'm ready," said Cindy. "Let's go." Three. Bad news. The three singers left the dressing room. Denise looked at Cindy. "You haven't finished your makeup," she said. "What's wrong? What did he want?" "Oh, nothing," said Cindy. "Nothing important." The road manager was outside the dressing room. He was holding a newspaper. "Have you seen this?" he asked. "Greenfield Sun, eleventh of November. Stop Strawberry." Four hundred people came to a meeting hall last night. They heard a talk rock and roll music by State Senator Pugh. Senator Pugh said, "Rock music comes from the devil. The worst rock singer is Strawberry of Strawberry and the Sensations." To stop tonight's concert by Strawberry and the Sensations at the Arcadia Concert Hall in Greenfields. Strawberry and the Sensations are at number four in the top twenty this week with their song "I Can't Forget." Pew doesn't like the singer because of her hair. Strawberry's songs are about love. Nobody has said anything bad about her before. They sold all the tickets for two months ago. What is it? 
said Bobby. She took the newspaper. It was the Greenfield Sun. She laughed. Ha, it's a nice town, she said. She gave the newsy. Cindy looked at the front of the newspaper. What is it, Cindy? You aren't laughing, said Bobby. It isn't very funny, said Cindy. She dropped the newspaper on the floor. Oh, he's just crazy, said Bobby. Don't worry about it. There are a lot of crazy people, said Cindy. A lot. Another road manager came over to them. We're going to begin later tonight, he said. The kids aren't in the hall yet. They're coming in very slowly. Why? said Denise. I don't know, said the road manager. The police are looking at everybody's tickets very carefully. What? Po said Denise. We never have police at our concerts. There's never any trouble. Denise looked at What did that police officer want? she said. You haven't told us. Haven't I? said Cindy. She turned to the road manager. My microphone all right, she said. I had a problem with my microphone in the first show. What kind of problem, said the road manager. I was listening to you. It was okay. No, it wasn't, said Cindy. Can we get it? Yeah, all right. But I'm sure there's no problem, said the road Cindy. What did the police officer want? asked Denise. Sorry, Denise, I don't have time. I have to look at that microphone. I can tell you later. Cindy walked away with the road manager. Denise turned to Bobby. What's wrong with Cindy? she said. I don't know, said Bobby. Then she looked down at the newspaper on the floor. I really don't know. Four. Dancing in the Dark. Cindy, Bobby, and Denise were waiting at the side of the stage. The band was beginning the first song. Hank, the guitarist, moved to his microphone. Here they are. It's Strawberry and the Sensation! The kids were screaming and shouting. Cindy, Bobby, and Denise danced onto the stage. Cindy took her microphone. It's a rock show, rock show, rock show. Hold my hand and let's go, let's go, let's go! The concert hall was dark. Cindy could see a line of police officers in front of the stage. They weren't looking at her. They were all watching the people in the hall. The band played the first three songs very well. Cindy was beginning to feel better. She was enjoying the show. But she couldn't forget the piece of paper. Bobby and Denise didn't know about the paper. They were standing next to her. Cindy moved away from them. Maybe there was a crazy person out there. The piece of paper was about her, not Bobby and Denise. It was dangerous for them when Cindy was standing next to them. The fourth song ended. Cindy went to the side of the stage. She held a microphone in front of her face. The next song was a big hit a few years ago when Bruce Springsteen sang it. You all know this one. It's Dancing in the Dark. Do you want to sing it with us? Three thousand people shouted, Yes! Do you want... Cindy stopped. She usually said, Do you want to dance? She looked at the side of the stage. The police chief was standing there. He was holding the piece of paper. 
I usually say, "Do you want to dance?" But tonight, please stay in your seats. There are a lot of people here, and the police have asked you not to dance. They want you to stay in your seats. There were a lot of shouts and boos. Everybody was booing the police. Cindy looked down at the line of officers. The kids were throwing things at them. Wait," said Cindy. "Wait a moment. The police are wearing blue uniforms, but a lot of people here are wearing blue jeans. Believe me, everybody here tonight is wearing a uniform." People laughed. They want you to stay in your seats, and I want you to stay in your seats too. I'm asking you to stay in your seats. All right. Everybody in the concert hall was shouting, "All right!" But I want you to sing. Can you sing? Cindy turned round and looked at Hank. What's happening? He said, "Play the song, Hank," said Cindy. The man in the tower. The band started dancing in the dark. Cindy finished the second verse. Jason, the saxophonist, walked to the front of the stage. He began the saxophone solo. Cindy moved to the side again. She looked up at the white lights above her. There was a lighting tower with the speakers and lights on it. Then, she saw him. A man sitting on the lighting tower, just a few yards away from her. He was wearing a white shirt. There was something in his hand. Cindy could see the light on the metal. The saxophone solo finished. Bobby and Denise were singing the third verse. Cindy didn't sing. She was watching the man on the lighting tower. He was pointing a gun at her. Quickly, she threw her microphone at him. There was a screaming noise from the microphone, and an explosion. Something hit Cindy in the face, and she fell down. The band stopped. Cindy looked up the lighting tower. What was the explosion? She was okay, but did he hit somebody in the band or in the concert hall? No, the microphone hit a light. That was the explosion, and the man dropped the gun. Now there were police officers on the lighting tower. They had the man. They were pulling him down from the tower. Cindy put her hand to her face. Then took it away and looked at her hand. It was red. There were pieces of glass all around her. Are you all right, Cindy? It was Jason. Yeah, I'm okay. It's only a small cut. The police chief walked over to Bobby's microphone. I'm sorry, everybody. That's the end of the show. Someone tried to kill Strawberry. Uh, Miss Harris, I want everybody. But Cindy already had Hank's microphone. It's all right, she said. Nobody's dead. I'm okay. We're going to finish the show. All right, Hank. What are you waiting for? Hank began dancing in the dark again. It's okay. You can dance now," shouted Cindy. The police chief looked at her. He smiled and walked off the stage.
a new fan. Cindy ran from the stage after the last song. The kids were shouting for her. The police chief was standing there. You're very brave, Miss Harris, and you did the right thing. How did you hit the light? It was ten or eleven yards away. I didn't throw the microphone at the light," said Cindy. "I threw it at the man. I missed." A tall man in a white suit was standing behind the police chief. He walked over. "Miss Harris." "Yes," she said. "I'm Senator Pugh. Maybe you read about me in the newspaper. I'm very sorry." I never thought that somebody. There are a lot of crazy people," said Cindy. "Yes, yes. Well, I really am sorry. Forget it," said Cindy. "Everybody's okay." A road manager held Pew's arm. "I'm sorry, Mr. Pew. No autographs." Cindy never gave autographs. What? Said Pew. An autograph? But I don't. Cindy walked towards her dressing room. Excuse me, she said to the police chief. I'm going to wash my face. We can talk in my dressing room. They went into the dressing room. Cindy sat down. Thank you for finishing the show, said the police chief. I thought there was going to be trouble. The show must go on," said Cindy. "Singers always say that, you know." "Ah,、uh, you never give autographs," said the police chief. "Never." "Well, not usually, but you can have one. Here's my new CD. I can autograph that for you." The police chief smiled. I don't think I'm going to listen to it, Miss Harris. I don't like rock music very much, but but I'd like your autograph. <laughs> <laughs>